One of the m very important areas of research that the association is focused on funding and has many I important and exciting collaborations on is to find biomarkers. Biomarkers are signatures of the disease and this is so important because really the diagnosis of ALS remains quite challenging unless a person with ALS goes to a specialized clinic and is seen by neurologists who are very familiar with the disease, it can take a very long time before they finally get the diagnosis of ALS. And this, when we think of therapies, is a critical issue. If we want to find therapies and hope that they are going to make an impact, we have to treat the disease earlier. At the time that most patients come to the clinic, they have lost a significant number of motor neurons, the key cells involved in this disease. And so if we can much earlier identify that a person will develop the disease, we have a likelier chance of being able to use a therapy and protect those dying motor neurons. So our efforts in biomarkers are both critical to finding better therapies and also they are important for us because our challenge is to really perform clinical trials in which we can show a meaningful difference of a treatment. A biomarker, to remind you, is it just a signature of the disease. It can be taking a blood sample, it can be taking a sample of the fluid that bathes the motor neurons in the brain, or it can even be a measure of muscle strength. Um, so what, what is important about it is it can tell us that if we come in with a therapy, are we seeing a change in the disease? The search for biomarkers is one that is done in many fields, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and MS. And it's very difficult to find something that is particular to a, a particular disease. So what you're trying to do is you're comparing with a normal population and that those that have the disease. So we have launched major collaborative efforts where we collect samples from patients and we use novel technologies to try and find these signatures. Other exciting research areas that we support include gene therapy and antisense. Gene therapy is a method of delivery. One thing that is very challenging in ALS is to try and get the therapies to where we need them in the brain and spinal cord. We have a unique normal protective barrier that prevents things going to the brain. But in the case of ALS, we need to get therapies there. And so a lot of work has been focused on how to actually deliver the therapies. And gene therapy is a method of delivery to provide supportive factors, nutrients, things that we know that the motor neuron needs for its survival. And many studies, particularly in the animal models, have shown to be quite successful using this technology. We hope to move that concept from the animal models into humans. The second area of interest, which is very exciting and really showcases the concept of bringing an idea from the lab into the clinic, is that of antisense. This is a technology that has been around for a long time, but has not been used for neurological diseases such as ALS. Antisense is an approach to downregulate or dampen down the production of an unwanted protein. And at least in some cases of ALS, admittedly only 2% of ALS, where we know that a mutant gene, SOD1, is problematic, getting rid of that might well have a huge impact on the disease. And in fact, this was an idea brought to us by an investigator in the lab, requesting support and funding for it. And in a short four years after having done some very initial discoveries, we are in the stages now to try and bring this into the clinic. And it will be very exciting to see this approach, which is so novel, being taken in for ALS and hopefully making an impact for some cases of ALS. If successful, even though it's only now for 2% of ALS, there might be other abnormal genes and proteins that we might want to get rid of, and this would be a potential technique to do that. We know that ALS is a complex disorder, so we also know that the research is a complex one. And I strongly believe that we cannot make an impact in the research area if we don't 
forge very strong collaborations. And these are collaborations with one academic group and another, academic groups with the biotech, and academic groups and the government supporting the funding. So at the ALS Association, and in particular its research programs, we really nourish and value these fantastic partnerships that we have forged with the government, with the biotech, and with the academic sector. And I think it's through these collaborations that we can all use our individual skills, our influences, be it at the government level, and even the partnerships with patients, with chapters, and with other associations to really make a difference in this disease. When I talk to patients and families and they might ask, well, what do our research programs do for ALS? I think I should emphasize there are several components to the programs. One is that we fund internationally, so we constantly bring new scientists to the field of ALS. The other is that not only do we fund the research, but we help direct the programs. In many cases, good ideas come from sitting together with colleagues and putting together projects we might find other players who can fit that program. We bring different diverse uh, expertise together and novel technologies. And an important way of doing this is by the workshops. We hold about two workshops a year, focusing on different areas of the disease. And in most cases, we bring experts outside the field. They are international scientists that come to the table. And we discuss different topics, in some cases stem cells, in other cases, we might look at the whole spectrum of studies that we are doing and see how our ideas and our understanding of the disease is moving us forward to developing new treatments. And this is one example of a workshop that we will be holding to really try and tackle drug discovery and drug development for ALS. <laughs>